Star Wars Battlefront, the classic collection, has been an absolute disaster since day one. However, I am slightly late to this, I'm about four days late, I'm always late to these things, but four days ago, Aspire have released patch number three for the classic collection on all platforms including PC, Xbox, PlayStation and the Switch. And I'm going to break it down for you right here in today's video, go through all of them and share my opinions, the current state of the game, has it revived the player count, let's all find out together. Seduce me. You. Seduce me. What? Spy, I ain't gonna seduce me! If you go on to enjoy this video or find it helpful in any way, if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that'd be much appreciated. It goes further than you know, and I'll really appreciate it. Enjoy the video. So to start off today's video, we're gonna be doing everyone's favorite pastime, looking at the Steam reviews. This is where the fun begins. As you can see right here, it seems like people do not like this game. Why? Well, everyone probably knows why. Anyway, let's scroll down and instantly I can see there is no offer on this game. Are they that greedy? Stupid? I don't know. They just do not put this game on offer. And if you have such a small play account, why do you not just shove this game down? It's almost £30. Why not put it down to £14, £10, anything like that? It's just stupid. Anyway, let's go in to the reviews right here. So... Top review is, I hope Aspire never aspires to release another game. Absolutely. To be honest, I feel like they have messed this one up. This might be the biggest fumble of the last couple of years, honestly. Totally not worth it. Worth for a refund. I am taking this personally as a Star Wars fan. And all I can say is, Aspire can go to hell. The porting sucks. So many bugs. And you don't even fix the old bugs since PlayStation 2. WTF. What lazy workers you got there, Aspire. Stop destroying classics. And this next one is... Devs should be ashamed of themselves. That's basically the whole census of pretty much every one of these reviews. Just, devs should be ashamed of themselves. They should never release another game. Everyone has got refunded as well. Look at all of these. It's crazy. Please do not buy this game. It is an absolute scam. Just get the originals and do not fall for this cash grab bait. Absolutely right. You know what? I found that helpful just because if I scroll up and look at this, just look at the prices of these. £8.50, £8.50, £29.33. You can get these cheaper on CD keys or anything else. It's just crazy. I think I got the game for about £3 when it was on offer a few years ago. But it's just absolutely outrageous. And with very good reason, it has a lot of negative reviews. Look at that. So we are on Aspire's official website. I will leave a link to this down description if you want to have a look for yourselves. But as of four days ago from Aspire Joe, Update 3 is available now for Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection on all platforms. So let's have a look. All the platforms are on here, so they break it down. This is across all of the platforms. And then further down, it's Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, etc. So there's a fair few on here, as you can see. Starting off with, they've made improvements to server stability. That doesn't really make much sense because there's literally like two people playing this at one time. It's so stupid. Fixed an issue where a loud sound would occasionally play during matches. Fixed various issues with the game crashing unexpectedly. Fixed several bugs regarding UI and text. Fixed an issue in split screen where first person zoom had distortion effect applied to one player. They also fixed several graphical issues across both games. Fixing issues where players would not spawn in with awarded weapons and bonuses after reaching legendary rank and the associated medal. Just let me know down below, have you actually experienced any of these? Has this fixed it for you? Let me know, I'm curious to hear. There are silly things like this where they fixed an issue where look sensitivity option would continue to apply to the right analog stick after enabling the swap LS and RS option. That seems to me like it should be a very very simple thing that should never have even been an issue in the first place. It just shows that it was a lazy port, they just wanted some money and just to get everybody in the nostalgia strings, which worked initially but the backlash, oh my god. They've now included a kill death ratio that appears correctly on the career stats. The fact that it was wrong in the first place is just nuts. Fixing an issue where English voice lines would play after selecting a non-English language. That's just a bit dumb, isn't it? A lot of these are just very, very simple issues that shouldn't have been issues in the first place, if you know what I mean. So moving on to Steam, they fix an issue where Xbox button prompts would appear with a PlayStation controller connected. Sometimes that happens on different games, that's not too bad. Fix an issue where button prompts would not display on the Steam Deck. Do any of you play this on Steam Deck? I'm very curious to hear. They fixed an issue where the crouch button would not always function. They fixed an issue where the footstep sounds would rarely play while in third person. That 
just doesn't comprehend in my head. That doesn't make any sense why that would be an issue in the first place. They also fixed an issue where headshots would not register properly. Were any of these issues actually in the original games or have they just appeared in this new port? I would love to know. It just seems they barely tested this game at all. They just used AI to make the graphics better. Bang, done, in you go. Cheers everyone, 30 pounds each, thank you very much. That's what it seems like to me. So after all of these wonderful reviews led by every single person, in the Steam community at least, what is the current player counts right now? Looking at the part of the reveal trailer for this game, their advertisement, their amazing marketing that they use to pull on everybody's nostalgia strings. They said 64 players online multiplayer. In massive 64 player online battle. Do you think there was actually a functioning 64 players multiplayer game? Did any of you play one? Right at the beginning of the game's life cycle, when there were full lobbies here, there and everywhere, there were absolutely terrible server issues as you can probably remember. But then since they fixed the servers, there's not even enough people playing the game at one time to fill a full server. So currently it is 4pm exactly on the 24th of June 2024. We are 3 months and 10 days since release. And as of 27 minutes ago, there were 31 people playing the game at this time. 31. Just to put it into perspective, look at the player count for the OG 2005 Star Wars Battlefront 2. That is what you call the power of community made mods. It is amazing. If you haven't already, pick this game up. It is so fun on PC with the modding capabilities. You can even play Star Wars Battlefront 3. Yes, I'm not even kidding. There is a mod that changes this game completely. I will be making a video on that very, very soon. Let me know if you want to see that. I am so excited. Just a quick side note, if you've made it this far into the video, leave a comment down below saying dead game, just to let me know that you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Also while you're here, check out Saber Custom, they make absolutely amazing replica Star Wars lightsabers, including this one that they sent me, which is amazing. The absolute domination of the gameplay in the background you can see, believe it or not, is actually in an online multiplayer server on PlayStation 5, and guess how many people there were in this lobby? There was myself and one other other player. That is the maximum size lobbies I could find. I also found this really really cool little bug spawn trap glitch thing that I absolutely abused. It was very fun and satisfying to use. Just take a look at the solo domination that I had this game. So as you can see I'm on PlayStation 5 right now and we're gonna go straight in to join on Battlefront 1. So let's have a look. How many players are playing this right now? <laughs> oh my god. I thought there would at least be one or two people playing this. That is outrageous. Let's have a look at Battlefront 2. Hopefully there's at least one player playing this. All right, let's have a quick look. Multiplayer, search, any game mode. All of these are on any. Let's have a quick look. And there's four. Wow, that's more than I thought. Four players. Oh, that is it. There are four people online in this entire classic collection on PlayStation 5. And they're all in one server, which is strange, but four players. So to wrap up today's video, the question is, the real question is burning on everybody's mind, has this update saved the game? Absolutely not. This game is still as dead as ever. I would not recommend buying this game if you want to play it online. You're better off getting Star Wars Battlefront 2, the OG 2005 version, because it's also like a sixth of the price or something stupid. It's so much better than this pile of garbage. But if you want to play this offline on the Switch or Steam Deck or anything like that, definitely, yeah. The offline on this game is very good, it's still the same as it was, the graphics are better, but it's just very expensive. If you found this helpful at all, or if you have any thoughts, let me know down in the comments section down below, leave a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.